What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be talking about corn snakes. Corn snakes are some of my favorite snakes out there. I love the Pantherophis genus, and these are just really, really beautiful animals. I know I say that about every snake, but I really do love corn snakes. Corn snakes are also known as a red rat snake, and they're close relatives to the rat snakes that you might see in your backyard. You can usually find corn snakes in the southeastern United States, whereas with the western rat snakes, you might find them in places like Oklahoma, Texas, or even farther west. Right now I have four corn snakes. I really love these animals. They have beautiful patterns. They eat really, really well, and overall they're just great pets. Margo was my first corn snake. This is actually the first pet snake that I've had. Margo does quite a bit of exploring, and she uses every inch of her tank. With the granite morph, that means that this snake is anerythristic, meaning she lacks the color pigmentation that makes red. She was surrendered to us by somebody who can no longer take care of her. Now after posting online and asking people questions and asking for help about what the morph is of this corn snake, a few people suggested to me that this may actually be a gulf hammock rat snake. If you look at pictures of these online, it would completely make sense. What's weird about this corn snake is she doesn't actually have a head stamp. Margo's fairly handleable. They're not the most handleable snakes. Sometimes they are pretty cool and will let you hold them from time to time, but really they just want to get away. Gregory might be my most beautiful pet snake. This snake has this gorgeous orange, yellow, and red coloration to her. Gregory is known as an amelanistic corn snake. Now if you were to breed Gregory with Margo, you might actually get a snow corn snake, which is the next one I'm going to talk about. Hamilton is my snow morph corn snake. Something I highly recommend are these little moss caves. You can get these on Amazon for about $6, and some of my snakes love these. Hamilton loves, loves, loves these caves. Hamilton is in there all the time. Margot, for example, will curl up in this moss cave and stay there for a day or two. One thing about these snakes is that you never really know what you're going to get in terms of their personality. Gregory, for example, is really, really shy, and I rarely see Gregory above the substrate. Gregory spends most of his time buried under the substrate while hiding. I will catch him occasionally during the night taking a drink or just, you know, going for a nightly stroll. I don't really blame him though. I don't always like being around people either. So this is Gladys. Gladys is an Amel Motley snake. She's definitely our oldest snake. Gladys was actually rescued. We picked her up from someone who was holding her from another friend. That friend never came and picked her back up. Um, she was living in a tiny enclosure. It was only a 20 gallon tank like the one I have behind me. This snake definitely needs at least a 40 gallon tank. She was surrounded by her own poop, probably two or three months worth of poop. It was really bad living environments. On her tail here, I don't know if you can tell, but she had a spot where she had some stuck shed. It messed up her tail. She was just living in a really bad environment, so I'm really glad we were able to pick her up. She was wheezing when we first got her. It seemed like she had a hard time breathing, may, may have even been sick, and she seems to be happy now. When it comes to giving these snakes water, you really just want to have a water bowl that is big enough for the snake to completely curl up in. Change your water at least once a week, but the more the better. Lately, I've been using a 50-50 mix of tap water and purified water. You don't have to do this, it's just my personal decision, but either way, it should be fine. If you want to use just bottled water, that's fine. If you also want to use tap water, that's fine. Just make sure if you do use tap water, you use this tap water conditioner. These snakes will soak from time to time, even though I've never seen any of my corn snakes actually do it. When it comes to the substrate for these snakes, they really aren't super picky, but I would definitely recommend Aspen. Aspen is readily available, it isn't super expensive, and it works great. Many times I'll see Hamilton or Margot burrowing, and sometimes I'll see their little heads sticking out. What a derpy face. I did decide to change the substrate in Margot's tank to some organic topsoil. Honestly, this isn't necessary. Aspen works just fine, but I just thought I'd give her something a little different. She seems to love it. She's been burrowing everywhere and I really think it's good. When it comes to tank size for these snakes, I've said it in my other videos, but you wanna have a tank that is at least the length of your snake. For me personally, I've just been using tanks that I know have enough space for my snake to completely stretch out in. I start my baby corn snakes out in a 20 gallon tank, and some people will argue that this is big and might be intimidating to a snake, but as long as you give them plenty of enrichment, plenty of hides, and places to burrow, I think they'll be just fine. 
Later on in life, these snakes will get a few feet long, and you'll want to consider putting them in at least a 40 gallon tank. Now for my corn snakes, I like to use a combination of a heat mat and a heat emitter coming up from the top. I keep my dome on a timer for a day-night cycle. For my heat mat, I choose a mat that's appropriate for the size of tank that I have my snake in, then I also buy a thermostat. For your heat gradient in this tank, I would say make sure you have a spot of around 90 degrees on one side of the tank, and then for your cool side, I would have around room temperature. Snakes are ectothermic, so they get their heat from outside sources. So you need to be able to give them an environment that lets them choose whether they need heat or cool. Something you definitely want to consider when you get a new baby corn snake is that you have plenty of places for this snake to hide. You can go to local craft stores and they usually have fake plants that you can buy and other materials that you can fill your tank up with. You can spot clean your tank from time to time. I would recommend cleaning your tank at least once a week and then changing your substrate at least once every three months. Some people will say you need to change your substrate once every month, every three months, every so often, you know, a bunch of different things, but I usually stick to the rule of if, it, if it's not too nasty, I change it just once every three months. With baby corn snakes especially, they don't make a huge mess, so you don't necessarily have to change the substrate every week. Now when it comes to the handleability of these snakes, they are kind of handleable, but I definitely wouldn't say they're the most handleable snakes. I'd probably give that crown to ball pythons. And I actually am leaning towards saying that king snakes are more handleable than corn snakes. Gregory, for example, he really just wants to get away whenever I'm holding him. He doesn't want to chill at all. Even Gladys, my bigger corn snake, she really is pretty squirmy. Hamilton has calmed down a lot. Whenever Hamilton was little, Hamilton would be bitey and would just really be trying to get away. Now Hamilton just kind of glides through my hands and is just kind of there to hang out and is just kind of curious. You'll start your baby corn snakes off on a pinky. They'll eat one pinky every five days or so for a few weeks or up to a few months. Once I can no longer see the pinky in the snake's body after they eat it, I move them up to a fuzzy and so on and so on. Come here, puppy. It's okay, puppy. You scared of the camera? Atlas doesn't like the camera. He says, it's scary. Oh, he went away. I really love corn snakes. Honestly, every time I'm in a pet store and I see a different morph of corn snake, I feel like I have to have it. Overall, I'd say corn snakes really are great pets. They're awesome snakes. They have some beautiful patterns and coloration, and I would definitely recommend them as pets.